After returning from the Bahamas, we thought it'd be a great time to haul out, do a bottom job, and paint her. This will be my third time in the boatyard on this boat. I've been in the boatyard twice with the commercial boat that I worked on. And then several other customers I've been in the boatyard with their boat. So it's nice. I've kind of found a rhythm with the boatyard. So get out, get pressure washed. Um, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to pull these props off. You can see right here. There's a bend. A little bit of a bend right there. And then there's uh they're just not exactly tuned. So we'll get those pulled off so we can tune them. Next thing after that is I'm going to pull this, the cutlass bearing, which is inside of here, out, and then we'll um, we'll send those down and we'll get drop those off because they usually take a week to ten days to get that stuff back. So you get that off and get it sent off, and then we'll come through and we'll sand. We're going to paint from that rub rail up there down to the water line. This white and this blue all is going to get painted gray, and then from the water line down we're going to get a new bottom paint. Since we bought the boat, it's always had this real thick caked on paint here. And so we're going to go through and we're going to get all that back down to the, um, the base coat, the gel coat. So it adheres real good because it never adheres really good. Any little nicks like this, we'll go ahead and address with some thickened epoxy. And same thing with this. We've got some fairing compound. This was rub rash from when the boat went through Hurricane Irma before we bought it. And uh, we've never really addressed it. So um, just as we walk around, you'll see we're just going to address those kind of things um, this is where the strap was they didn't get as good a pressure wash but you can see that again this is the pre the pressure washer was able to take it all the way down the fiberglass here so that tells you that whoever painted this original base coat it's now failed I'm not saying they did a bad job but over time it's eventually failed and so we're gonna take all that off really good we'll probably take all this this much here down to gel coat get a good prime on there, uh, epoxy prime which will seal it, and then uh, new bottom paint. A lot of the bottom paint down here is in decent shape, but again you can see over here at one point whoever did this it's come off so we're going to have to take that, we'll sand that back a little bit, blend it, several coats of good epoxy primer. Um, it's it's kind of more of the same, just more of the same everywhere. And we're just, just stuff that just needs time to touch it up. Um, this through hole used to be for the salt water intake for the toilet up front here. Uh, we don't have a salt water intake, so this is actually abandoned. It's just a through hole that's closed off, so we're going to actually seal that up. And I've got one on the other side as well uh, that's, again, we've had it abandoned for like a year, and so we're going to go ahead and seal both of those up. Um, the fewer the through holes on a boat, the less opportunity for bad stuff to happen. Um, yeah. And then on the front here, we'll address all of our damage from our anchor when we had our really, really bad sea day several years ago. So we'll fair that out and get that all, all repaired. And then um, we'll paint this as well. So that's that's the plan. Paint, bottom paint, and then running gear tuned up and then uh, we'll get her back in the water. Some older boats on the starboard prop will have a reverse thread. Uh, this boat came that way with the old shafts, and then when we put new shafts on and bought it, they put the thread back uh, to a normal thread. So you mean it's not righty tighty lefty loosey? It used to be. Now it's, it is righty tighty lefty loosey. It used to be opposite? It used to be opposite. It's called reverse thread. Interesting.
just like four dump trucks on the driver's side, I think it was, their lug nuts were reverse red. The thought was they wouldn't back off with the wheels spinning a certain direction. They've abandoned that theory. So your cutlass bearings in here, this is your strut, and then inside here there's a like a bearing, it's rubber, and when it goes bad, you get play. See how I can move that up and down? So that's, that's how you know when you test a cutlass bearing to see if it's good or bad. This is a propeller puller. We'll slip it over here. Put some pressure and it should pop this thing off. The goal, of course, with this is to try and get even pressure as you're pulling it off. Carter, come over here, like over here. Try and keep these lined up in their things. Okay. So we got one here and one there. Got them? Uh -huh. Then it's just a matter of putting pressure on all these and just turn them all. A little bit until the propeller pops. The goal is just to keep the even pressure and then we'll tap it and it should just go bonk, pop right off. So we'll see. Sideways and a little shock when you got some pressure and she comes right off. They're not always that easy, I promise. Now that I've said that, this other one's going to take me all day. Helps to have the right tools on. Really foul. Yeah. I have to pick up these really. So these propellers have a groove in the shaft, key goes in there, and then you've got a groove down here. And so that's what the, the twisting torque, and then you put a, a nut with a lock nut with a, with a uh, cotter pin to keep them from coming off. This is called Strut Pro. This is for removing cutlass bearings. Oh, Carter, we got to do something else first. Um, find the picks out of there and they're set screws. See them right here? We need to pick them clean and grab the wire brush that's in the DeWalt bag, brush those clean, and then Allen wrenches. Okay? So the way this works, I don't know how, I mean I do know how they did it before, but it, was, it, it just was horrible before. We've got all these different sized plates here. Go to your, I have a two inch shaft, so I go to my two inch, and then you grab these guys. Metric or standard? Grab them both. And you get the right size to slide in there so you can push. bearing out. This will go in here and then I've got a you'll see in a second here I've got a tool. It'll just bring this and it'll push this in and it'll slide my cutlass bearing out the back. And then when I want to go to put it back in, the opposite. Then we'll take this guy. This side, you get one that holds the bearing or holds the strut, but will clear the bearing. So that'll be this guy.
Got those? Yeah. So it's kind of like a jackhammer for the bow, like just. Why do you have, why do you put three? Just take this, ratchet four or five times on each side. Breaker bar. Almost done. You're getting it. Almost there. Are you having fun yet? No. You want a new career? Negative. Welcome to this week's edition of... Talking from our aft. We're actually behind the aft. You get the full Monty of the aft. Maybe he's got back, for sure. <laughs> um, so we've had some questions about hauling out, why we haul out, that kind of thing. Why did we haul out now? Why does anyone haul out? What are we doing no. on the haul out? All of it. Uh, for us... We were planning on hauling out in November anyway, just because um, that's a good time of year to do it in the Florida. It's cooler. We it's had family not... visiting for Thanksgiving, so yeah. we thought we could haul out, stay in an Airbnb. Yeah. Um, less rain in Florida in November. But um, we got back from the Bahamas a couple weeks early before I had to go back to work, and we said, you know what? We've got the time. Let's do it now. So it's actually, this video's behind. It's actually July when we're hauled out. Yeah. And there's a heat wave and this extreme oh, yeah. heat. And the heat index has been 110 plus every day. It's been I mean, miserable. The, the wind weather has just been unreal. It's crazy thunderstorms every afternoon. Um, but, so we wanted to answer why did we haul out? What are we working on? What are we doing? So first thing is bottom paint. Um, bottom paint is, as you can see down here, it's this blue black part. And that's the part that's in the water, right? Um, so what what is bottom paint for? So bottom now, paint. Why do you why have it? Yeah. So bottom paint is to, uh, to help keep growth from attaching to your boat. So when you're in salt water, you can get growth and whatnot. Even fresh water, you'll get you'll get growth. Um, they have different paint compounds depending on whether you're fresh water, salt water, brackish. How you plan on using your boat? If it's mm -hmm. going to sit at the dock, a lot of times they'll do hard paint. If you're moving your boat a lot, like us, to do like a soft paint, it's called an ablative paint. Helps to shed the growth while you're underway. Um, so bunch of different types of paint and what it, but it's all for the same thing and that's to help release the growth off the bottom of the boat mm -hmm. so when you get your diver it doesn't mean I don't have to have a diver or I don't have to get under there myself and, and wipe it or hit it with a scraper um, but this just helps release that that much easier mm -hmm. if you don't we've seen boats that have years of growth and oh they're it's grown through the paint to the to the fiberglass yeah. and it's like chipping off concrete yeah so it can be really bad so you got to keep your bottom paint uh, in good condition and then as it, over time with scraping and using it it wears off mm -hmm. um, Depending on how you use your boat and what type of paint and some other factors three to five years probably and how long has it been for us? It's been We bought the boat four years ago. Mm -hmm. We did a bottom job But then we hauled out like a year and a half later because we had the damage to keel yeah. And I'd like a spot job like where I did the repair and a couple so of that other was spots. 20 2020 September of 2020. Yeah, so it's been three years and it looked pretty good our problem was before we bought the boat or when we bought the boat the people who i didn't know how to do a bottom job back then and we paid a yard and they didn't do a good job at all they didn't do proper prep work and so a lot of our paint came off because the paint that it was painted on top of yeah. came off so the old paint job came off it's all about the prep work and they yeah. they didn't they just did a quick scuff quick sand yeah. and painted so it looks good like in the yard you're like oh it's pretty but longevity it doesn't hold up doesn't work. Just like any paint job, mm -hmm. the main thing for prep work is anything that's loose or chipped or is already failing, you got to get that off. Mm -hmm. Even if it goes all the way back to the fiberglass, that's fine. You get it all off, you, you take 
the rough edges where the paint's thicker and where it's thinner, where it's failed, and you smooth that, make a transition, mm -hmm. and then you spot prime, and then you paint. Now, the primer's real important on a bottom job. Um, it's an epoxy primer, and it actually seals the fiberglass from water. Because if you don't seal the fiberglass, and water is always against the raw glass, it will, through osmosis, will absorb the water, and that's how you get blisters. And so you don't want blisters on the bottom of your boat. You don't want blisters on the bottom of your boat. However, blisters will not sink your boat. Yeah. So if you are buying a boat and there's blisters, don't walk away be just because of that. Well. I'm saying don't walk away just. If it's small, little it, quarter it, dime size blisters and there's yeah. some of them on older boats, it's, it's kind of part of the thing. That being said, they're blister, you can get blisters that are you know six inches a foot across and are all over. That's probably not a good boat to have. But um, Also, real quick, uh, you mentioned we had our bottom job done. What is the expected cost for a bottom job? It it's, it's, all depends on how big the boat is because usually it's a per foot. Um, a boat our size, if you're paying someone to do it, what did we pay the first time? Three to five thousand. Yeah, it's going to be in the neighborhood of three to five thousand. Big difference on paint, too. There's paint that's like $150 a gallon, and there's paint that's like $600 a gallon. Yeah. And, um, but it really depends on what you it's how, need. Yeah, it's how you're using it and where it's at. Um, we used Micron 66 the first time, and that's about $450 a gallon. And it did a really good job. Uh, since then, I've used Micron CSC on a couple other boats, and that's been really good. And that's about two hundred fifty dollars a gallon, so it's a little bit cheaper. Um, but then we can clean it off in the water if the water's clear enough, and it, we mm -hmm. can get off all that stuff. Uh, the other thing we chose to do this time is to paint our hull. And when I say hull, I'm talking about this rub rail where you see the silver rub rail right up there down. So the so white. All this white below that silver rail on both sides. Uh, we have an older boat. It's got oxidized gel coat, and it's just time. It um, was either polish and wax it like crazy, mm -hmm. but there were still chunks missing. We still would have had to paint it and parts of it, and then you can never blend it perfectly. Yeah, and it had, uh, it had damage. This is from Irma. It had oh, rub damage from where it rubbed against the dock on yeah. the side here. We patched it, but we never painted it. Right. And so... Oh, careful, careful. <laughs> we're in a boat yet. <laughs> Okay. So, um, but so but we're we, so all this on the side right there is going to get painted, and we're going to go with a light gray color because that's what nice bougie yachts <laughs> are these days. So we're going to have a gray boat, and then we've got rid of all of our striping on the boat. Um, I don't know if you can tell up top so, there. Here, actually, yeah. So there used to be like a blue stripe right there, right and all around the sides. So we got rid of that, and then there was also a boot stripe, which was <laughs> right here. There's a boot stripe around the boat. This was a big wide blue bootstrap here we're going to come gray all the way to the water line and then bottom paint all the way up to the water so, yeah. gray. so that's what we're planning on doing in the boat yard is painting 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 and what else did we yeah. want to mention yeah. yeah and then we're also doing um propellers mm -hmm. and when i say we're doing propellers we're getting them tuned you take them to a propeller shop and they straighten them they always get little curves where it's not quite straight, just overuse, you nick stuff, you hit stuff, you don't even realize. And um, we had it done when we bought the boat. It's been four years. They look pretty decent. They could still run. We weren't getting any vibrations, but we could see a couple of bends. So we sent those off to get tuned. Because, again, the next time you do it, it's probably going to be another four or five years when it's mm -hmm. out of the water again. So why not do it now? And then the swim platform, the uh, rope rail, rail around the swim platform, uh, we've been in two or three hurricanes or storms in a marina and so that just slammed against the dock and the, the rubber did what it was supposed it to do. It doesn't slam, it just kind of rubs yeah. against the dock yeah. sometimes when it gets big But it up. did what it was supposed to do so it was kind of peeling and... It was and, in it was in poor shape when we bought the boat Yeah. and so we're going to address that. We're just going to buy a new one. And, and, and then the other big thing is cutlass bearings. So cutlass bearings are down here. There's a little V shape on the hole that this is called the strut, so your cutlass bearing goes inside right here. Oh. There you go. Yep. Cutlass bearing goes inside right here, and um, actually, hang on a second. I got one in the truck. Let me go grab it. Okay. And then Carter's here while well, he grabs that. Carter's here. Uh, Chase and Caleb are with friends or grandparents. Um, it's just so hot, and there's no power in this marina, so we're not staying on the boat. We're staying in a hotel. Um, Carter is actually being paid to help us and he is extremely helpful. Chase and Caleb are happy to help, but it's too hot and there's, you know, then there's too many cooks in the kitchen. So this is a cutlass bearing. It's, it's a tube with metal and then it's got a rubber inside here. It's got little grooves in it and that allows water to get in the grooves and the shaft goes inside there and that keeps it lubricated. Over time, this rubber uh, gets worn and so your shaft gets loose and it moves around and so 
again, part of the maintenance, you just have to renew those. Usually, my experience has been, if you're hauling out to the bottom job and it's three to five years, usually it's time to, if you're running your boat, it's usually time to, to replace these. Will those just wear out because it's rubber just sitting? You know, you wouldn't think they would because it's just, there's nothing turning. Yeah. I would think it's the turning of it that would wear it, right? Because mm. uh, there's your props running. But um, And it's not exposed to sun, so you wouldn't have the rubber failing. Oh, like getting from UV yeah. and stuff? Well, yeah. just grow. But basically, the way you check that is you grab the end of your propeller and, and, and you kind of lift it up with your shoulder when it's out of the water. And if you can get any movement, if it jiggles at all like this, it's time to replace, replace it. Replace it. Um, and they're kind of suck to do. They take a specialty tool and acknowledge how to do it. Most people pay the boat yard. Um, Which you saw. You saw Chris using this tool. Oh, yeah. I did. So if you're in the area and you want me to come do it, just give me a call. Captain Chris now. $1,000 for the thing. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, but uh, we will be doing some more uh, videos on our experience here in the boatyard. So stay tuned every Friday yeah. at 8 a.m. Otherwise, enjoy the journey.